Let's now proceed to the word. Sige nga, let's review. For those of you who are taking notes, okay, what were the messages so far that we have been hearing? Okay, first Sunday, si Sir Nino ang nag-preach. What was his theme? New Year Necessities. Ah, tiloy na, galing. Ah, last Sunday, I preached. What was the theme? Make room for the new. Today, our theme is New Beginnings, Second Chances. Okay. Ano ang common word sa mga temang iyon? Okay, new. Okay, syempre, new year. Kaya ang tema natin, new. Okay, bago. New beginnings and second chances. Alam nyo mga kapatid, our God is a God of new beginnings and second chances. Ang ating Diyos ay Diyos ng bagong simula at pang pangalawang pagkakataon. Now, let me talk about these two phrases. Okay? First, The first phrase is new beginnings. Okay, God is a God of new beginnings. Ano bang ibig sabihin noon? Okay. Sa Genesis 1.1, memorize siguro nating lahat yung verse na yan. It says there, In the beninging. <laughs> In the beninging. <laughs> In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Back in 2014, when we started our church, Bishop Solmerin was here in Toronto and helped us. And then he had a lecture about creation. Sabi niya, the very first thing that God created, according to this verse, is what? Heavens and earth. Sabi niya, hindi daw. It's not actually the heavens and the earth that He first created. But the very first thing that God created was time. Ah. You see, God is eternal. Right? He is, God is forever. He is timeless. But before God created the heavens and the earth, before He created humans, first He created time. Ah. Ano ba yung first three words? In the... Biningging. Okay, beginning. It means there has to be a beginning. Kailangan merong beginning. Kailangan may simula. So, nag-guess nyo, God is eternity. But He has to break eternity and set a beginning of time. Are you following church? Okay. Now, pag sinabi nating time, time is constituted of uh, years, months, days, hours, minutes, and seconds. Time runs in a cycle. Ang panahon at oras ay paikot-ikot, paulit-ulit. Huh? After 60 seconds, oh, 60 seconds na naman. The same is it with minutes. After 60 minutes, another 60 minutes will follow. After 24 hours, another 24 hours will roll. After one week, another week na naman. And then another month. After one year, another year will come. Alam nyo, after the flood and when the rainbow appeared in the sky, God gave a promise to Noah. And the promise is found in Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. Sabi ng Diyos kay Noah, As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. So hanggat patuloy ang pag-ikot ng mundo, hindi titigil at patuloy na magkakaroon ng pagtanim at tag-ani, araw at gabi, tag-init at taglamig. Huh? So time will always be a cycle. Oh, mula noong pinanganak kayo hanggang ngayong oras na ito, totoo ba na nangyayari ito? Amen. At hanggat umiinog ang mundo, patuloy na magiging cycle ang time. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Now, if that is the case, then it proves that our God is a God of new beginning. Because God is always giving us a brand new hour, a brand new day, a brand new week, a brand new season, a brand new year. Ngayon, kung meron kang hindi nagawa ngayong araw, aba eh, may bukas pang darating. Ay, hindi ako nakapamalengke kahapon. O, eh di, mamalengke ka ngayon. At kung hindi ka makapamalengke ngayon, eh di, bukas ka mamalengke. nag natin mga kapatid? Okay. If you miss doing something last year, huh? then you can do it this year. Hmm? Last year, I was planning to enroll. Hindi ako nakapag-enroll. O di, try again this year. Pwede namang gawin this year. ba? Diba? So there will always be a new beginning because God is a God of new beginnings. God created new beginnings for us. Amen? Hindi ba kayo masaya, mga kapatid, na nag ending ang isang araw? Tapos, pagtulog natin, pagising natin sa umaga, may bagong araw na naman? Imaginin ninyo kung walang katapusan ang gabi. Ah, para naman sa mga lovers yun, sana hindi na matapos ang gabi. Pero imaginin ninyo, no, kung hindi na kayo nagising, aba, eh, rest in peace na yun forever. Salamat at may bagong umaga. Di ba? Salamat at may bagong taon. Praise the Lord. Dahil yan ay regalo. Time is a gift of God to us. Salamat at may kamatayan. Alam nyo ba yon? O imagine nyo kung forever na kayong hindi namatay. Nanonood ba kayo ng mga vampire movies? Di ba yung mga vampira daw forever, hindi namamatay? O eternal sila, immortal. Tapos na, naiinggit sila sa mga humans kasi ang humans may oras ng pahinga. Oh, kaya yung mga namamatay, uy, buti na lang namatay ka na, nakapagpahinga ka na. Di ba? Kaya pinagpapasalamat pa rin natin yun. Aba, nung, noong malapit, ng, nung naghihingalo na yung nanay namin, naghihirap na yung nanay namin, ang prayer namin, Lord, kunin mo na si Mama, Lord. Diba dumarating yung mga ganong panahon? Kaya salamat sa Diyos sa mga beginnings at mga endings at mga new beginnings. Diba? Praise the Lord. Okay, now, let's go to the second phrase. Yung second part nung title natin ay Second Chances. Now, this will be the heart of my message today. So, magtatagal ako doon sa phrase na Second Chances. God is not only a God of new beginnings, But He is also a God of second chances. Sino sa inyo ang gusto yan? yan. Kapag tayo ay nagkakamali, nadara pa, nagkakasala, binibigyan tayo ng Diyos ng muling pagkakataon para bumangon at bumawi muli. Hallelujah! Aba, eh, how many times do we sin and fall from God anyway? Many times, di ba? Oh, so that's why Notice the title, hindi ko sinabing, I did not say second chance. I said second chances. So, because God is a God of third, fourth, fifth, and many, many, many chances. Amen. Hallelujah. Yun nga lang, nasanay tayo doon sa word na second chance. Okay. Pero second chances is also grammatically correct. Okay. Whether pero hindi ibig sabihin na pangalawang chance mo, mo, mo yan. Pwedeng pangatlo o pangapat o panglimang chance mo na yan. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, in the Bible, we can read stories of people who messed up, they sinned, they made mistakes, they committed crimes, and they disobeyed God. However, Their mistakes were not their final endings. They were given new beginnings and second chances. Alam siguro nating lahat ang kwento ng prodigal son. 
it reminds us of the love of God to His children. Para tayong mga, ano yan eh, parang kwento natin yung prodigal son na yan. We are like mga alibughang mga anak na pilit pumibiglas at umaalis sa piling ng ama. Gustong malayo, gustong magsarili, gustong mabuhay ng pariwara. However, whenever we feel lost, whenever we feel poor and weak and helpless, and whenever we feel like going and returning back to God, our Father, He readily welcomes us in His embrace because God is a God of second chances. Amen. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul, alam niyo ba ang kwento ni Paul? Before he became an apostle, he was a murderer of Christians. Pinapapatay niya ang mga Kristiyano. Ang lahat ng nagko-confess na si, si Jesus ay Diyos. However, God changed him from a murderer into a church planter and evangelist to many nations. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sino pa? Ang nabigyan ng second chances, si Rahab. Rahab was a prostitute. Akalain nyo yun? Mang bibigay aliw ang kanyang trabaho. But because of the grace of God, Rahab was included in the lineage of Jesus. Akalain nyo si Rahab ay naging ninuno, ninuno, ninuno ni Jesus? Okay. Sino pa? Gideon. Gideon was known as a weakling, the weakest link in his family and in his clan. But God gave him a second chance and transformed him into a mighty warrior. Amen? Pag naririnig nyo yung term na mighty warrior na yan, yan wag nyo kakalimutan si Gideon. Kasi sabi ng Panginoon kay Gideon, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Amen? Hallelujah! Now, God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. What God has done for His children before, He will also do to His children in the present and even in the future. Can I hear an amen? Kung nagpatawad ang Diyos at nagbigay ng second chance noon, He will also do the same for us right now because God is is a never-changing God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, church, if God gives us new beginnings and second chances, shouldn't we give new beginnings and second chances as well? Kung ang Diyos ay nagpapatawad at nagkakaloob ng muling pagkakataon, hindi ba dapat tayo ay nagbibigay din ng second chances? Ninyo. Nakakalungkot lang. It's just sad to see a lot of relationships break because people refuse to give and people refuse to accept second chances. May mga anak lumalayas at sinusumpang wala na silang kinikilalang mga magulang at mga kapatid. Ayan napagalitan, nagtampo, naglayas, di na umuwi. At para lang mapanindigan ng anak ang kanyang sinumpa kahit nahihirapan at homeless na, pilit tinitiis dahil sa pride. Oh, meron din namang kabaliktaran, vice versa. Ang mga magulang, ayoko dyan sa pinanganak, pinangasawa mo. Sinuway mo ang gusto ko. Oh, pinalayas ng nanay at tatay ang anak, sinabi, wag na wag ka na muling tutuntong sa pamamahay na ito ha. At dahil pinanindigan ng magulang ang kanyang sinumpa, hindi na nga sila nagkita ng kanyang mga anak. O, diba? Sa pelikula lang yon pero nangyayari sa totoong buhay at nakakalungkot. Sayang ang mga masasaya ng relasyon ng mga mag-asawa, mag-anak, magkaibigan, magkasosyo at iba pang mga relationships dahil ayaw magbigay o tumanggap ng second chances masyadong mga ma-pride. Why does God give second chances? And why do we need to give second chances 
as well. Huh? Sabi nung kanta, one more chance. Ton, ton, ton. Okay. Bakit kailangang natin ang second chance at bakit kailangang magbigay din tayo ng second chance? Ayan. I got inspired by uh, Pastor Ed's La- Ed Lapis's sermon on why people need another chance. Marami siyang mga points na sinabi pero pumili lang ako ng tatlo for the sake of time na ibabahagi ko sa inyo ngayon. So why do people need another chance? Number one, Because people make and commit mistakes. Diba? Sabi ng Psalm 103 verse 13 to 14, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion to those who fear Him. For He knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are, hello, dust. Naaalala ng Panginoon kung paano tayo nabuo. Naaalala ng Diyos na tayo ay lupa, na tayo ay alikabok. Kaya nagkakaroon siya ng habag at ng awa sa atin. Bilang mga gawa sa lupa at alikabok, nagkamali na tayo noon at kung hindi pa pa man nagkakamali, siguro magkakamali pa rin tayo dahil gawa lang tayo sa We are fragile people prone to make mistakes. May kasabihan, ako ay tao lamang. Nagkakamali rin. Diba? Now, I'm talking about mga pagkakamaling hindi sinasadya. Mga pagkakamaling huli na noong na-realize mo. Di ba may mga ganong mga pagkakamali? Oh, I did not know. Ay, nay, nailawan ko ba tun? Oh. Di ba? Kaya may mga sinasabi yung mga matatanda na ang pagsisisi hindi na uuna. Nasa huli ang pagsisisi. Oh. Kaya ang Diyos po nagbibigay ng second chances especially yung mga hindi naman premeditated o sinasadyang mga pagkakamali. Now, in our judiciary system, if a person commits a mistake such as committing a crime, sabihin natin nakapatay, that person is being judged in the courtroom and sentenced for imprisonment. Di ba? Yan ang ating punishment. Now, the number of years is determined by the judge based on the severity of the offense. Nakabase sa kung gaano kagrabe yung kasalanan niya. So sabi nila, kapag ang isang preso daw ay sinintensyahan ng, let's say, 10 years, aba, talagang magpapakabait daw yan sa loob ng preso. Dahil meron siyang inaasahan na after 10 years, lalaya na siya, makakalabas na siya at mabibigyan siya muli ng second chance to live outside the prison as normal. However, if a person is sentenced into lifetime imprisonment, okay, Habang buhay, jan ka na sa loob ng preso. Ibig sabihin, wala na siyang pag-asa para makalabas. Alam nyo, yun ang taong desperado na. At ang taong desperado, ang taong wala ng second chance, lalong nagiging mapanira sa sarili at sa kapwa. They can be very dangerous and destructive. Wala nang pakialam sa buhay eh. No? Sila na yung mga nakikipagpatayan sa loob ng preso dahil wala na silang hope. Kahit ano pang gawin nila, wala na silang ibang pupuntahan doon pa rin sila sa loob ng preso. So, wala na silang pakialam kung sino pa ang masagasaan o mahamak nila. So, the difference between the person who has a second chance and a person who does not have a second chance is hope. Everybody say hope. Hope. At habang may buhay, tayo dapat ay may pag-asa. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, God knows that we are weak. We are made of dust. God knows that we are prone to make mistakes. Ayun, because we are made of dust and because God wants 
to give us hope to change and to reform, He gives us second chances. Amen? Naintindihan natin yon mga kapatid. Bakit kailangan natin ng second chance? Kasi nagmi-mistake tayo. Nakakagawa tayo ng mistake. Okay. Move on. Why else does God give us second chances? And why should we do the same? Second reason, because many people really learn only after committing a mistake. Because many people only learn after being afflicted. Pagka lamang nahihirapan na, nasaktan na, doon lamang natututo. Kaya ang daming payo ng mga magulang ang nasasayang. Dahil yung pinapayuhan, eh bata pa, hindi pa napapaso, hindi pa nasasaktan, hindi pa nadadala, hindi pa nakikinig. Pero oras na nasaktan na, nahihirapan na, sasabihin, ay, tama pala si nanay, tama pala si tatay. Kaya lang, talaman kong tama pala sila, hindi dahil sa nakinig ako sa kanila, pero dahil hindi ako nakinig. Hmm. At heto ngayon, nasa lanta ako, nawasak ako, sugatan, but now, I am a better person. Are you following church? So why do people need second chances? Because many people will not learn until they have already committed the mistake. Ang tawag ko dyan, learning the hard way. Hmm. Minsan, pinag-uusapan na yung mag-asawa. Yung anak mo, ayaw makinig. Eh, di let him learn the hard way. Ginagamit niyo ba yung term na yun? <laughs> Psalm 119 verse 67 Before I was afflicted I went astray but now I obey your word Bago ako nasaktan ako ay naliligaw ng landas pero ngayong nasaktan na ako sabi niya masunurin na po ako Ah, sino dito ang mas nagiging masunurin pagkatapos nasasaktan? Kailangan kasi pinapalo pa eh. Oh. Pero kung kailangan paluin, paluin para matuto. Bakit ba kasi bawal ang palo dito sa Canada? <laughs> Pinalo nga si Renza kasi Wesley, di ba? Ito, ganito ang rule, mga magulang. Hindi bawal ang palo, pero ang bawal yung may marka. Oh, pag nagmarka, naku, nagot. Okay. Pero ingat tayo kasi baka pwede tayong isumbong. Eh. Pero marami namang iba't ibang mga paraan ng pagpapalo. Ang palo, hindi lang physical. Okay, pwedeng pagsabihan, pwedeng i-time out, pwedeng i-grounded, yan. Mag-research tayo mga magulang ng iba't ibang mga forms of rewards and punishment. Yan. Okay. Now, but do you see the point, church? Tsaka lang tayo natututo kapag nasaktan na. Now, children, do you know the pare prayer of your parents and elderly for you? The prayer, our prayer is this. I hope my children, I hope my child will listen to my advice so that they will not learn anymore the hard way. So that they will not have to make mistakes and get hurt before they learn. Pero madalang mangyari ang ganun, di ba? Sana makinig ang mga bata para wala nang ma-experience na pagkakamali para lang matuto. Pero bakit ganun? Kailangan pang maranasan ng pagkakamali para maging marunong. Ano yung kasabihan? Walang uukol kung hindi bubukol. Kailangan may bukol pa para umukol. <laughs> ukol. Now, those who have done wrong 
can now be wiser. Diba? Kaya, experience makes us wiser. Good experience man o bad experience man, ngayon matalino na tayo. O kayong mga hinampas ng shovel, siguro naman ngayon mas matalino na kayo patungkol sa mga masasakyan, di ba? Ang sakit eh, ang laki ng ibinayad ninyo para lang matuto sa lesson na yon. Eh sana naman meron ngang natutunan. You see? Our mistakes, our pains, and our hurts make us wiser. Amen? And those who have done wrong can now be more valuable. Ito. Ano ang gagawin ninyo sa isang taong nagkamali na at therefore natuto na? Di ba mas mataas ang credential niya kaysa dati? Okay. Sino ba ang mas mahalaga sa isang kumpanya? Yung nagkamali at natuto na? O yung hindi pa nagkakamali at pwede pang magkamali dahil hindi pa natututo? O. Kung hindi nyo bibigyan ng second chance, ano ngayon ang mangyayari sa nagkamali? Tatanggalin ninyo sa kumpanya? Tapos kukuha kayo ng ulit ng bago na pwedeng magkamali ulit? Tapos pag nagkamali, tatanggalin nyo ulit, kukuha na naman kayo ng bago? O, oh, di hindi na tumigil yung pagbabayad ninyo sa kanila. O, oh, si Kuya Paul, may, may comment. Anong masasabi mo, Kuya Paul? Ay, present lang. Okay. Di ba? Okay. There is a story about a man who has a high rank in the company. Okay. Isang tao, isang empleyado, mataas ang antas sa isang kumpanya. Now, he made a big mistake. He made a wrong decision. And because of that wrong decision and mistake, the company lost a big amount of money. Now, he was so ashamed of what he did. So, he went to the CEO and handed his resignation letter. Now, the CEO said, Oh, bakit ka nagre-resign? Why are you resigning? Eh, kasi po nahihiya ako dahil sa pagkakamali ko, ang laking pera nang nawala sa kumpanya. And then the CEO said, Exactly! You made such a big mistake and the company paid a big amount just for you to learn that lesson. Perhaps you will not commit the same mistake again, right? Siguro naman hindi mo nagagawin yung pagkakamaling yun, di ba? Kasi ang laki ng ibinayad kong matrikula para lang matutunan mo yung lesson na yan. Ang laki ng ininvest sa'yo ng company. Oh yes, boss. Talagang hindi ko na po tatag-uulitin yun ever, ever again. O, oh, edi natuto ka, then stay and carry on with the project. Oh, naintindihan nyo yung pelikula? Okay. That is why people need second chances. Because usually, people become better when they make a mistake. Amen po ba? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Alam ko, marami dyan, mga nagwe-welga ang kalooban eh. Tungkol sa second chance na to eh. Hindi pa tayo tapos. Makakarating din tayo dyan sa mga ibinubugso ng damdamin ninyo. Okay. What else is the reason why people need another chance? Church, tinuturoan tayo ng Panginoon ng something. Minsan mahirap tanggapin, pero these are lessons from God. God is a God of second chances. We need to give second chances as well. And these are the reasons why. Number one, because people make mistakes. Number two, because we can become better after be making a mistake. And number three, because people can repent, change, and improve. Tama? With God's guidance and help, no one is hopeless. Ang mga tao pwede namang magbago. Ang mga tao pwede namang umasenso, lalo na kung kumikilos ang Diyos sa buhay niya. Liban na lang kung talagang sinapian na ng maraming mga demonyo. Now, Mark chapter 16 verse 9. When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, He appeared first to, sino daw? Ang una niyang pinagpakitaan, si Mary Magdalene, out of whom He had driven ilan? Seven demons, pitong impacto pala ang pinalayas ni Jesus kay Maria Magdalena. So kung nagkamali-maliman siya dahil may mga nakatirang demonyo sa kanya, 
Ngayon at pinalayas na ni Jesus ang mga demonyong iyon, tsaka nyo palang siya aalisin sa mga buhay ninyo? Ngayong tama na at naikorek na? Mary Magdalene was changed. And so everybody else can be changed by God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hala, kaya pala ang hirap pabutihin nitong taong ito. May nakatira palang impacto. Isipin nyo kay Maria Magdalena, ano, pito ang pinaalis. Oh, nagbibilang kayo ngayon kung ilan ang impact ang nakatira dyan sa katabi nyo, doon ba? <laughs> Tinan nyo nga, ilan kayong impact ang nakatira dyan? <laughs> Oy, ang mahalaga, ang binibilang natin yung nasa atin. Amen? Bakit bang ba kulit-kulit ko? Bakit bang ba tigas-tigas ng ulo ko? Ano-ano bang mga espiritu ang dapat maalis sa akin? You see, pinalayas ni Jesus yung demonyo. Nagkakamali tayo kung minsan kasi may mga iba't ibang mga espiritong nakasanib sa atin. Pero kung hahayaan natin ang Panginoon na tanggalin yung mga masasamang espiritong yan na mga umuukil-kil sa mga isip natin at mga damdamin natin, pasakop tayo sa espiritu, babaguhin tayo ng Panginoon. Amen! Palakpakan natin ng Diyos! Hallelujah! Now, the bottom line is, no matter how bad the situation is, even if you think that a person is hopeless, there is always hope and grace from God. Amen. Now, ito na. I want to make myself clear. Makinig kayo. Please don't get me wrong. Knowing that God is a God of second chances does not give us an excuse to sin. Hindi porque alam mong mapagpatawad ang Diyos, ay aabusuhin mo na ang kanyang kabutihan dahil hindi pwedeng makipaglokohan sa Diyos. Sabi ng Diyos sa Galatians chapter 6 verse 7, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Huwag ninyong akalaing madadaya ninyo ang Diyos dahil kung ano ang itininim ng tao, iyon din ang kanyang aanihin, gunggunam. Ano nga ang gunggunam? Buti nga sa'yo. Ne, hindi, iba yung buti nga sa'yo. Eh. Kasi yung buti nga sa'yo parang belat. Ang Ilocano nga gunggunam, yan ang, yan ang napalamo. Oh, yan ang napalamo. Yan ang inani mo. You suffer the consequences. There is always a consequence to our actions. Hindi porket mapagpatawad ang Diyos, magsala na tayo, free na tayong magkasala. Aba, hindi ganun ang Diyos. May kabayaran sa lahat. Kung tinanim mo, tin- nagtanim ka ng masama, eh di masama ang aanihin mo. Kaya, Hindi dahil alam mong bibigyan ka ng asawa mo ng isa pang pagkakataon, ay, Kristiyano ang asawa ko. Patatawarin ako niya, tapos ikaw naman, aabusuhin mo na. Paulit-ulit mo na siyang sasaktan. Harap-harapan ka ng nakikiapid, lantaran na sa buong mundo, may kabit ka, tapos aasaan mo, makikipagbalikan sa iyo yung asawa mo. Abuso na po yun, hindi po ba? Remember, that God does not tolerate sin and the hard-headed. But instead, He is gracious, mabait ang Diyos, mapagpatawad ang Diyos to those who are really repente, repentant and are ready to change for good. Pero kung ilang beses na kayong nag-away, ilang beses mo nang nilikturan, pabalik-balik ka na sa Kanya, wala pa rin nangyayari, abay, abot mo na siya kay Satanas. Yung mga taong tunay na nagsisisi, mga kapatid, pilit na nagbabago at pilit na humihingi ng pagbabago sa tulong ng Diyos. Are you following me, Church? Amen! Sila yung mga binibigyan ng muling pagkakataon. At kung nakikita naman natin, At ramdam naman natin na sila nga yung mga tunay na nagsisisi sa kanilang mga pagkakamali. Nakikita naman nating handa naman silang matuto, handa namang magbago. Eh bakit hindi natin sila bigyan ng second chances? Hindi ba? 
ka. Oh. Kasi sayang mga kapatid kapag walang second chance. 'Di ba? Sayang naman pag walang second chance. Unang-una kapag walang second chance, sayang lahat ng Bible characters. 'Di ba? Except for the Lord Jesus Christ kasi he never made a mistake. Pero lahat ng Bible characters, may mistake sila. Pero they were given second chances. ba? Diba? Sayang si Moses. Nagkamali siya. Nakapatay siya ng Egyptian. He was a murderer. Wala sa panahon. Nangyari yun. Now, binigyan siya ng Lord ng second chance. Yun nga lang, 40, 40 years muna siyang nilekturan ng Diyos doon sa disyerto bago tinawag muli sa ministry. Pero at least si Moses may second chance. Oh, sayang naman si King David. Pinapatay niya si Uriah para lang ang kinin si Bathsheba bilang asawa, pero binigyan siya ng Panginoon ng second chance. Sayang naman si Peter. Sa tingin niyo ba natuwa ang Panginoon noong tatlong beses niyang libakin, nakilala niya at tagasunod siya ni Jesus? Pero sa kanya pa rin ipinagkatiwala ni Jesus ang ministry, di ba? Sabi niya, Peter, on this rock, I will build my church. Kasi nga, natuto na. Amen. Sayang naman si John Mark, si Mark. Hindi si Mark Arsenio, ha? Si disipulo, si apostol. Alam niyo ba, one time nagpaalam na siya eh, ayaw na niyang mag-ministry. Pero bago namatay si Apostle Paul, sabi ni Paul, isama niyo si Mark. Kasi malaki ang naitutulong niya sa ministry. Sama mo, Paul. Si Mark, mag-cosco kayo. Sayang ang lahat ng tao. Sayang yung katabi mo kung hindi mabibigyan ng second chance. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, uy, sayang ka pag wala kang second chance. Di ba? Matatapon ka lang ng ganon, samantalang pwede ka namang isalvage. Hindi yung salvage na papatayin tapos itatapon sa tabuhan, ha? <laughs> Pilipino lang ang may, ex- may explanation ng salvage na gano'n. Salvage, ibig sabihin salvation, pwede ka pa namang masave. ba diba? Parang yung mangga, may konting dot, bulok, ay, may uod, tapon na. No, wag mong itapon. Tapyasin mo lang yung kinagatan ng uod. Tapos, pwede pang isave yung iba. Sayang. Ano, porket merong butas lang ng, ng langgam dyan, itatapon ko na yung damit ko. Eh, syempre hindi. Pwede ko pang tastasin. Pwede ko pang gawing kumot. Oh. You see, people need to be given an opportunity to be better because people can be better by the help of God. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, I came across a poem by an unnamed author. Ang title ng poem, The God of One More Chance. Med- medyo malalim siya, pero sundan natin. Practice tayo ng English. The God of One More Chance. A man named Peter stumbled bad, lost all, all the love he ever had, fouled his own soul spring, Cursed and swore and all that sort of thing. He got another chance and then he preached the gospel to many men. Amen? That's Peter. A boy goes wrong the same as he who fed swine in a far country. Sinong nagpakain ng mga baboy? Yung prodigal son, di ba? He seems beyond the utmost reach of hearts that pray, of lips that preach. Give him another chance and see how beautiful his life may be. Amen. Paul, yung sinabi ko kanina, Paul cast the young man Mark aside, but Barnabas, his metal tried. Called out his courage, roused his vim, and made a splendid man of him. Then Paul, near death, 
longed for a glance of Mark who'd had another chance. Praise the Lord. King David, one dark day fell down, lost every jewel from his crown. He had another chance and found his kingly self redeemed, recrowned. Now lonely souls and countless throngs are lifted by his timeless songs. And now this is for all of us. For fallen souls, kayong mga kaluluwa, na nahulog, arise, advance. Ours is the God of one more chance. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mga kapatid, alam kong sa nagdaang mga panahon, nagdaang taon, nagdaang mga linggo, nagdaang mga araw, may mga nangyari sa buhay natin na malulungkot. Meron tayong mga nagawang pagkakamali, mga kapalpakan, mga kakulangan, mga kahinaan. Perhaps you are running away from God just like Jonah. We are familiar with the story of Jonah who got swallowed by a big fish. God was calling Jonah, tinatawag ng Diyos si Jonah para pumunta doon sa Nineveh. God was calling Jonah and was sending him to the east, to Nineveh, to preach the gospel. But instead of going to the east, Jonah went to the opposite. He went instead to the west and was running away from God. Because of the disobedience of Jonah, God sent a big storm that was stirring and shaking the boat where Jonah was. And so Jonah said to the crew, Alam nyo ako ang dahilan eh kung bakit may bagyo. I am the reason why there is a storm. I am disobeying and running away from God. God is trying to shake in me and punish me, but then you are all affected because I am inside the boat. So throw me off board into the ocean so that all of you will be saved. And so Jonah was thrown out of the boat. However, God was not done with Jonah yet. God caused Jonah to be swallowed by a big fish. And there inside the fish, he stayed for three days and three nights. From inside the fish, Jonah repented and prayed to God. Siya ay nagsisi, na-realize niya na siya ay naging suwail sa pagtawag ng Diyos. And after three days and three nights, the Lord commanded the fish to vomit Jonah into the dry land. Now, God could have given up on Jonah. God could have chosen another prophet to be sent to Nineveh. Pero ito, mga kapatid, ang nakakaintig sa Jonah chapter 3, verse 1. Sabi nung versikulo doon, Then the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. Muling nangusap ang Diyos kay Jonah. Imagine, God could have all the right to say, oh, bala ka na dyan. Magdusa ka, mamatay ka sa loob ng isda. But the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. God spoke to Jonah again and called him again for the purpose that God has intended for him. Muling nangusap ang Diyos kay Jonah. Muli siyang binigyan ng isang pang pagkakataon upang gampanan ang purpose na pinagagawa sa kanya ng Diyos. Church, my personal testimony, I also tried to run away from God. Although I know, bata pa lang ako, alam ko, 
Tinawag ako ng Panginoon na magsalita, mag-bridge, mag-pastor. I knew that. I know the abilities that God has given to me. But I tried to run away from Him. Sinumpa ako, ayokong mag-asawa ng pastor. So, nangyari nga. Pero mag- magpapastor na daw siya soon. See, God gave me a second chance. 2014, I heard His voice again. God spoke to me again and said, I want you to be my mouthpiece. God is a God of second chances, mga kapatid. God is a God of new beginnings. Lumibas na ang 2021. Here we are starting again our brand new year. Church leaders, I want to speak to you right now. Later on, we're gonna have our year planning. Natuto tayo sa nangyari sa mga nakalipas na panahon. Marami tayong mga nakaligtaan. Marami tayong nakalimutan. Marami tayong hindi nagampanan. But God is a God of second chances. Reset na naman ang ating kalendaryo. Magsisimula na naman tayo sa January. binibigyan tayo ng Panginoon ng joy to restart and reset all over again. Amen. Magpasalamat tayo sa Panginoon dahil may panimula na naman siyang ibinigay sa atin. Let us thank God that we can reset again our calendars. Salamat sa Panginoon. Mag-fill up na naman tayo ng mga bagong daily planners. Kahit hindi nyo nagamit yung binigay ni Sister Russell sa inyo last year. Let's thank God that we can once again have a brand new start. Amen. Hindi ba kayo natutuwa? Uy, bago na naman yung daily planner ko, year 2022. Klaro na naman ang kalendaryo. Magsisimula na naman tayong magsulat ng mga appointments. Salamat sa Panginoon sa bagong simula. Pangalawa, magpasalamat tayo sa Diyos. sa paulit-uli niya at magpapatawad sa ating mga kasalanan at pagkakamali. God does not get tired of welcoming us back into His arms. No matter how many times we run away from Him because He is a merciful and a God of second chances. Pangatlo, kung may mga ilan sa inyo na may mga taong nangangailangan ng isa pang pagkakataon sa inyong mga buhay mula sa inyo, suriin po natin at ipagkaubaya po natin ang pagpapatawad. Parents, give your children their second chances. Yung mga hindi nyo nakakausap, tapos na ang 2021, hindi nyo pa rin nakakausap. Tabagan nyo sila. Give, give your relationship a second chance. Vice versa, children, kayong mga nagtatampo, kayong mga may mga hinanakit, hindi porket nasa Canada na kayo, nakatakas na kayo. Magulang nyo pa rin sila, kapatid nyo pa rin sila. May mga hidwaan man, tayo ay magpatawaran. Husbands and wives, kung may isasalba pa naman ng inyong mga relasyon, mag-usap at magkasundo kayo ng masinsinan. Upuan at pag-usapan ninyong mabuti. Hindi yung nagsalsalsa balutan na lang yung isa. Walang closure. Walang maayos na arrangement. Pang-apat, kung tayo man ang nagkaatraso sa ating kapwa, humingi tayo ng tawad sa Diyos at humingi tayo ng tawad sa ating kapwa. Let us ask God to help us change and be transformed. into His likeness. Amen.